Hello everyone and welcome to this video where the work on the Alta locomotive continues. Now this train has been sort of on my to-do list for a while now. I've been working on it, developing it, and with the help of my moderators and admins, made some fixes that I'm going to show you now as well as we're going to continue on the next areas of the train. So first things first, you'll notice that I've added the badging on the front for the brand and on the exterior, most of it does look the same. However, the interior did receive a revamp and you'll see that here in a second. So the downstairs area here still has the little kitchenette and seating area. I've added some equipment throughout now. And now up here, you'll notice the biggest change. So I think that this sort of area is more or less um, complete with obviously minor changes that I may need to make. There's been some great suggestions that I implemented and you'll notice that now we have two sort of control panels or systems here. And if we turn on the ignition and the displays, this sort of system ramps up here. I did make it spawn with the brake fully engaged. We'll see if that stays or not, especially when we start pairing up multiple locomotives and trains. But the nice thing now is if you tap on this, you could actually convert it from kilometers an hour to miles per hour, which is good for you that use the Imperial system. However, the calculator will still use meters and kilometers and the temperature will still stay a, stay a Celsius. It's just for you to get a feeling of the speed. Now there is the map feature that you can zoom in and out on. And there's a CCTV system just like the uh, one that I have on the newest um, OMA vessels where you could have it automatically cycle through the camera feeds or you can have it or you can just skip through them manually. Now the rear camera is quite nice. It kind of sticks up over here. And if you're uh, pulling a large train, you could actually kind of see the train. That's the intention of it. Of course, the front camera here is just another view of what you have here and I've added controls to all the lights so now you could actually engage the tail light you can engage the rear spotlights the front spotlights the running lights coupling lights I've actually added here so if you are trying to couple the trains while it is dark this is does kind of give you a nice illumination of that area and maintenance lights sort of near the wheels here so other than that, the system here is more or less um, as it was previously. I did fine tune the generator and now you can actually end up getting a really nice sort of, um, you get a really nice uh, ability to charge your battery as you go. So it shouldn't be draining even it, with a full, fully loaded situation. Right now we're obviously not towing anything. Then we have the light here with the walkway lights, the heater, the bedroom still stays as it is. Now over here we have an autopilot system and a radio. And here is our signal switch. So if you are coming across a signal, this is where you can adjust it. And this system actually lets you sort of pick where you're going. And if you're going, let's say here, you can engage the autopilot system and it'll take over. But one thing to note is if this throttle is in the fully um, open position, when you hit that location, it will keep going. So you'd have to turn down this throttle and keep on the autopilot throttle. This way it will come to a stop. And what's really nice about this, it also gives you sort of a prediction of when it will reach that area. So it is also sort of a calculator for your time to get a feeling of when you're reaching your destination. Now, of course, you can set your autopilot with the waypoint. And you're gonna see here in a second, the, the brakes are gonna engage and stop us. So we fully come to a stop. Now, granted, if we had the throttle all the way up, you'd see this, it, this would actually happen. So it wouldn't keep going, it would fully throttle down. But the problem would be once you release your autopilot, it would go back into you know fully powered mode so you do want to turn everything off and press that button but like i said you can go into your map 
and you can select a far away distance location like let's say here and we could set our waypoint and then we can add it here and you can add it with the keyboard so now it gives you a straight shot so obviously the calculation will be wrong because we are kind of twisting and curving it doesn't follow the road so if you do want a more accurate representation of your path you can sort of select the nearest point and then it will calculate out for you your trip and distance based on this system that you've put so this is a nifty little system i find especially for um long haul sort of trips and if we go over here now i have added some more detail to the engine room obviously this is not complete i'm not going to leave it white but now you have your systems you can individually engage or disengage we have coupler power that starts off false so i'll see if i engage it or not but the idea is if you add a car on top on this uh, train then you can actually provide it power if it has some sort of unit in that area of course but if not, then um, you don't want to drain the power from your locomotive. This is the engine. Now it works pretty nicely. And there is a manual start here with a throttle. So you could actually ramp up your engine and provide sort of a regular auxiliary power without turning on your engine here and without turning on all the lights on the locomotive. So this is if it's just sitting sort of in limbo you can actually use this here and back here we have a room that i've not yet decided what to do with obviously in real life locomotives you do not have a room with windows you have a lot of mechanical parts and things and batteries and engines and stuff but um i do like the idea of possibly putting something back there we'll just see what it is so everything now seems more or less to be in working order for this train the only thing that I want to do now is start to develop the microcontroller that will communicate with multiple units. Now this is where there are existing systems that were recommended to me, but just as I like to do a lot of my own stuff, I find that it is quite nice to develop a system that I could use myself. And last but not least, I did add the uh, signal switch with the spacebar here, so if you are using your um, binoculars you can switch the signals also there's a bell and there's a horn that's attached to the siren so it is quite loud but when you let go it just turns off because it uses the um, it uses a relay so that's more or less the systems yeah there's a nice little lamp here and at night time you get a nice moody feeling as you truck along so this is intentional and realistic and you have one here as well so you can kind of have this nice glow effect as you train along inside the workbench here the one thing that i will note is that when i designed the diesel electric microcontroller and when i designed the actual train sort of microcontroller I intentionally did it without thinking about the future, without thinking about pairing it with other locomotives and rolling stock. So I didn't really, I did plan on doing it from the get-go, but I didn't know exactly what was going to go into it. So I did not make them have anything, meaning that it's going to be sort of a retrofit system that we add things in and see how things work as they go. Now, obviously, we know that there's a connector on the front and a connector on the back of the train. So we're going to have to have them communicate through the electrical connectors to other rolling stock, to other cars that it's pulling, whether they be powered or whether they be other locomotives that require sort of communication. So with that, we have to add a system that will set one locomotive as the primary locomotive and the rest of the units will be slaved to it, meaning whenever you adjust the throttle and brakes in the primary locomotive, the rest of the locomotives will follow in suit. And if it isn't powered, if it's just a car that you're towing, a cargo car or whatever, then it won't communicate obviously with the engine, but it will communicate with the brake system. If you are using the brake here that we've 
added here for the automatic system. So there's some things to consider and it is my first time to develop a train microcontroller in this nature, but I have done trailers and other composite creations. So we'll see how this kind of plays out. As always, we'll start with the empty microcontroller and inside here, we're going to start adding things. Now off the top of my head, there are a few things that we have to add, primarily it being the brake output. So the communication going to the brakes from the system we will have to add the throttle. If you have the um, other ones being powered units, locomotives and such, and you'll have to have a button or a system to set which one is your primary and which are slaved to the primary. So for now, let's just make it a simple button. And truthfully, it may be much more complicated than that, but this is just kind of what I want to start off with to think about. So the, the first things first, forget about lights, forget about everything else. One unit will be the primary and it will communicate to the other units based on that. Now, in addition to that, we have to have the composites. So it's obvious that we have a front and rear coupler and front and rear couplers are going to be sending and receiving composite information. So I'll go ahead and add that there and we'll have one for the other one as well. Now, how to make one be the primary and tell the other ones pretty much, hey, you're going to listen to me. We'll find that out once we dig into the logic. I've went ahead and labeled everything. One thing I will do instead of the button, just regular toggle button, I will actually put a instrument panel that will act a little nicer. If you know, in my ROV, we have the instrument panel that controls the communication with the mothership. And likewise, we'll do the same thing here. And the reason why is because this instrument panel will tell us if this is the primary, if it is slaved to the primary, if it's failed and all that good stuff. So this now gives us a decent idea as a starting point of what belongs in here. And we'll see things as we start to add them. One thing currently not attached is this button here that pretty much toggles whether you're only braking for this specific locomotive or whether you're braking for the whole system. Right now it's not even attached to anything at all. So if you see here in this microcontroller, it's right now not attached, it's channel one. But what we have to do now is add a communication line. And what I'm going to do is dig into my actual train microcontroller. I'm just going to rename this the 454 SS train MC. And in here, we're going to add whether it is automatic brakes engaged or online. And in here, we'll now communicate with this brake lever because currently we're only braking for the train. It's right now not active. So if you do turn on your automatic brakes, then this brake node will have to communicate with our synchronized or synchronizing microcontroller. So the other thing here is now automatic brake um, output. So that now goes to the automatic brake microcontroller and it will pretty much just be engaged when this is on. Now, of course, I could actually have this whole thing communicate inside the synchronized controller, but I already have this existing. So we're going to put this here when our automatic brakes are online, then this will be on and it will be going to our automatic brake output. Otherwise, in here, this kind of can stay as it is. So I'd rather do this now before I get too advanced. So I've put everything, at least the nodes in here for the front coupler, rear coupler and the instrument panel. And of course, we have our braking systems, which currently I placed on a separate line here. But now we know that if this automatic braking is online, all that will mean is that it will now communicate with our couplers to the other trains to make sure that they break. So I'm just going to go and separate this and then start to populate the various items here. I've established which channels I want to communicate the ignition, the reverse, the throttle and the brakes. So the next logical step is to actually implement them and connect them properly. Uh, we know that with this, you can have them communicate to two 
of the couplers at once. So if this is the primary, is what we're saying, uh, the one thing we'll have to do, of course, is attach this to there. So it's kind of sequenced and it goes and communicates with those. Um, obviously, if this is the one, the main uh, locomotive sending information, that's where this comes in. But if we are not the main locomotive, the primary, we're receiving information, we have to make sure that these ones are active. But one thing at a time, let's make it right now such that it is sending information. So I have here that my break is channel two. So now I'm going to add here, my break is channel two. And likewise, there has to also be a toggle switch in this system that will say whether this is the primary or not, because if it's not the primary, we don't want it to be sending any information to anyone. I have went ahead and created this simple instrument panel that I'm going to use for my synchronizing system here. And the way I have it is channel one is the system that says that yes, this is in fact, the primary or master locomotive. So that will be um, channel number one. And we're just going to put that here as a number or Boolean like this. So this is reading and saying, okay, this is the master locomotive. And then in the meantime, we have to have the other one here that will be communicating back and saying whether or not we are receiving information from other ones or whether we are in fact the master. So in this case, what we'll do is have this plugged in to comp input one. And then we have to have if it is receiving will be on input two. But for now, this will be our starting point. That actually revamps the system. I want to have channel one Boolean saying that yes, this is the primary or the master locomotive. So we're going to add another channel here. And that will be applied right here. So when this is on, this is getting sent to the front and rear coupler saying, I'm the one here to listen to. And that also takes us down here to the number one, where we have to add the throttle. Now, like I said, the throttle is down here. But the thing with the throttle to keep in mind is that it has to also have the um, become the primary to listen to. So we have to add a function here. Actually, I'm going to keep it down here. But to not confuse things, we'll just put a numerical switch box that will be when you are um, controlling other locomotives, you're going to want to send the power. So actually, this is not the right spot. This is fine. This is sending powers to the local unit. But what we need is the numerical switch box that goes here into input one, saying if this is in fact enabled, then we are going to want the on to be coming from here. So now it is actually sending the motor value up here into our value on. Same with the brakes, it has to be the automatic brake system, and it has to be the primary locomotive, then it's going to send the brakes here to the number. And likewise for the reverse and likewise for the key ignition. So when the key ignition is on, it's sending our input two. when the reverse is on, it sends input three. So from what I could tell, this is the majority of the information that we're trying to send now if we are the primary locomotive sending information to the rest of them. Now for the rest of them, we obviously have to develop a system that can communicate and receive this information, but it has to be in the same microcontroller. So it's a two way street depending on if we've turned this switch on or not. Obviously, if you turn on the switch in multiple units, I think the system crashes, or I can maybe develop something that says whatever the whoever had it on first, whichever locomotive had it on first, that becomes the one to listen to regardless if you turn the switch on in other units or not. In that instance, I'd probably want to use a push button rather than a toggle switch. So that way, you can actually use a push and kick other systems out if they are not um, if they're not the primary. For the receiving side of things, we're going to still use the same channels that we're sending them on. But in this case, we are now receiving them either from the front or rear coupler. So it could be either or. 
Um, of course, there should only be one sending information, so whether it's from the front or the rear, it will be only one information, so that's why I can actually just add these values here and or them here. So in this case now, whether it's coming from the front or the rear, it really doesn't matter. It's only coming in one of those locations and outputting them here into the locomotive that is slaved. So in this case, we're now saying that there's another one controlling and we're now receiving this information. So one by one now we have to implement these properties into our microcontroller here to make sure that it's being properly communicated. So we can start off by this one here saying that now we are receiving from another unit that there is a master. So that's channel one here saying, OK, there's another master locomotive to listen to. So now you don't have the ability to control anything in this locomotive here. So that, first of all, can go to our indicator that tells us that, in fact, we are being controlled by another unit. So that's here, the train sync uh, instrument panel input number two. So that is now online telling us, okay, we're receiving the information, we're live. And second here, channel two is the ignition. So once I find the ignition here, I can apply this. Now the thing with the ignition is, remember it uses this kind of burst to turn the engine on. But what I'm gonna try first is to have this applied as just a regular OR function because truthfully, whether it's on or not is relevant. If you press the button, it'll either turn the engines on or not. Um, we will have to see how that exactly plays out. But for now, I'll take this path and apply it to here and apply it to here. So in that case, now we've applied the key input. The next one is the reverse. So down here we have the reverse on. So now we're just going to add another OR function and say if we're receiving that we are in reverse or not can go out here and can go up here now granted we don't want to be receiving information from another locomotive if we are the primary so there may be a little bit of conflicting information and i may have to say that if we are the primary here then we obviously don't receive this information from that microcontroller or something just to prevent information from jumping back and forth and kind of opening an endless loop of information. I went ahead and added that here. So it has to be not coming from the primary. If this is the primary, then we obviously don't want to be giving ourselves the same information or doubling it up or whatever. So just prevent anything like that. And now you can see it's starting to get a little bit dicey here with all the lines and I'm sure it's going to get worse as we proceed. So the next one here is the throttle. Now the throttle here, the forward throttle is right now applied from the lever itself. Um, but in the case of now slaving it to a master, this has to change. So now we can actually set a numerical switch box here and say that if it is off, then sure, the throttle communicates. But if it is on, then we have to actually be sending information or receiving it from here. So in this case, now we're getting it from our channel one um, number, which ends up being our actual throttle here. So then we are receiving it here and how to determine whether this is switched or not is whether or not we are engaged in the slave mode. That comes from channel one from another train. So that's right here. So assuming that it's coming from this channel and assuming we are not the ones, then we take this and switch this there. So that is now gonna be controlling our motors. For the brake system, that is a little bit different because I still want I don't know if I want a local locomotive to be able to have control over its brakes or not. It's a little sketchy if it doesn't, if it loses its brakes and it becomes fully automated. But at the same time, it also may cause a huge problem for you guys if one of your locomotives has brakes engaged for whatever reason. And now you've tried, you're trying to pull things and it's uh, not working. So I think I will have the brakes be fully overwritten if we are 
um, in this sort of slave mode, and then even the throttle lever in the locomotive will not be able to control it. The emergency brakes should still be able to, in my opinion, but I think the regular brakes should not. In addition, I've added a throttle pass-through, meaning the throttle coming either from our lever or from the primary locomotive goes to a throttle pass-through, and I've added the same for the key, because there are systems that were not being operated by the physical microcontroller by but being run by the physical key so now the key actually sends the information here which sends the information through to any locomotives it is also controlling and that's where we also apply the throttle because right now the throttle goes straight from the lever into this area here throttle input from seat and all that good stuff it then goes on to other information such as into the actual microcontroller but that throttle from the um for the autopilot here should actually be f getting fed from this one here so this should actually be going here and then our throttle pass through should be what's going to the throttle from the seat so now it's actually a closed system and not an infinite loop to test everything out i've got two locomotives here and we're going to turn on this one and we'll see that the engines are not on on the other one but if i turn on master now we've got the second one on and you can see here currently we have the brakes set to this one but i've not pressed the automatic braking switch so if i take a look at the wheels here you'll see these ones will be one and these ones on the second locomotive should be zero, as you can see. Now if I go back here and turn on that switch, we're going to notice that hopefully it works. So if I press this on, now it is braking with both locomotives. So of course here it should still be on, it is one. And now back here, we'll see that this is also one. So that means that it is working. I just had it show up for a second. There we go. The second test is now going to come with the throttle. So I'm going to throttle it up ever so slightly. And we can go now take a look at what our motor is doing. So back here, you'll see the motors are putting out 38 or 0.38. And then on this one as well, the motor is also putting out 0.38 so it's giving the same amount. Now I do see the battery is draining on this unit, but over here, the battery shouldn't be, oh, it's draining here too, so then it's a problem with my actual setting, so it's not giving it enough thrall to charge it up, so then the microcontroller for that is flawed, but if I do ease off the brake, you could see that we are now going, and we have the power of both locomotives, and we're seeing here that this one is saying master locomotive enabled. If I run back to the other one over here, we'll say that we'll see that it has the slave mode enabled. And in here, it'll still be reading and registering whatever that one is giving. Now, I did leave the emergency brake system separate, so you could still see it is braking with that emergency system and I've released it now and for some reason it's still going on squealing so I have to make sure that it actually did disengage no it didn't so we are getting full brakes so there is some issue communicating but for the most part we should be relatively okay I'm gonna disconnect them let that one go off now over here this is what I meant. So if I press this throttle to the on position and put that one down, we should now be under our own full control here because we're not slaved to that one anymore. So this one should be going off, but I don't know why that one sort of uh, ended up staying locked. I will take another look at the microcontroller, but the overall system is here. I've got them working. I'm quite encouraged when I see both locomotives like that sort of uh, pairing up and doing 
twice the amount of work. So really nice to see it coming together. Really happy with the progress. Stay tuned for more videos showing sort of the work in progress of the locomotives. Stay tuned for more creations. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.